Hello everyone, how you doing? A uh, quick update here about an exciting new comic that's appeared. Uh, as you all know from watching the social media and the news, we had a great, supposedly a great comic was supposed to appear this very month called the Comet Atlas. That comet is now disintegrated. It's fading. It's still visible, but it's fading away. It will no longer be an exciting naked eye object. We have, amazingly, as Atlas is, was disintegrating, a new comet was discovered in the southern hemisphere. It was discovered by Michael Matazioto, Zio, I'm not sure how to pronounce his surname, so sorry about that, Michael. But uh, this is not Michael's first discovery, he's discovered several comets, and this is his latest find. He's found it using the Soho Swan instrumentation on board the Soho spacecraft. Soho spacecraft, the Soho is the solar and heliospheric observatory. It's a, a, a telescope that observes the sun. It's located in space precisely between the sun and the earth at the L1 point. That's the point where the gravity from both objects counterbalances one another. So there's this spot of equilibrium in the middle where the spacecraft is located. The spacecraft films the sun, observes and monitors the sun 24 hours a day, every day, and it has done for years. It's studying the surface of the sun, the sunspots, the corona, chrom the chromosphere, photosphere, and different wavelengths, and there's different cameras on board. One of them is the SWAN camera, which stands for Solar Wind Anisotrophies. The SWAN camera detects areas of strong regions of hydrogen around the corona of the sun, and as a result, it sometimes picks up comets, comets that have very strong hydrogen readings. And this is what happened with the SWAN. Michael discovered this comet on March the 25th by scanning through the SWAN data and discovered a large signature of hydrogen associated with a new comet that has never been seen before. Uh, it's since become quite a very interesting object actually. The, it took a few days for the orbit to be refined, uh, it was a bit of a mystery. The comet appears to be a long period comet. As far as I know it's from the Oort cloud and this is his first time visit to the inner solar system. This comet has now exceeded expectations and is brightening beyond any predictions to date, so it's become a very exciting object. At the moment the comet is visible in the southern hemisphere, so it's not visible from the north yet. It's located in the morning sky before dawn within the constellation of double jackless Cetus, Cetus the whale. And observers in the southern hemisphere are now seeing it with the naked eye. The comet is approximately magnitude plus five. To put that in some kind of perspective, the faintest star the average person can see in a dark night with the naked eye is about magnitude six. A comet of magnitude five is two and a half times brighter than a magnitude six star. So it, the observers are seeing it with the naked eye. It's not an obvious naked eye comet, but it's just detectable by naked eye from lows from dry, very dark sites and using averted vision. So it's a naked eye object, it shouldn't be at this point, but it is, and that's why it's getting interesting. Photography has revealed a beautiful object, a lovely green coma, a moderately condensed condensation at centre, and recent CCD images on, within this last week, and particularly in the last 48 hours, have shown a stunning ion tail. Ion tail is also known as a gas tail or a plasma tail. But the ion tail is beautiful. I'm going to show a few photographs here now. The first one is a black and white one, inverted to show the, the textures and the detail in the tail. And it was taken by John Gleeden. Next one is a color, a, a color version of the photograph of the comet's tail taken by Gerald Ryman. Gerald Ryman is a very famous comet photographer. the intricacies of that tail, it's absolutely amazing. That's the solar wind blowing back these ions from the tail away from the sun and the fluctuations in the magnetic field call these, cause these disturbances within the tail. So you see this flow almost like a, a flag blowing in the wind and the next time it's a solar wind. There, there's streamers, you see these lines fanning out in all directions down the tail, which are called streamers and it looks to be various knots structures within the tail also. 
when the last week or so some observers picked up a disconnection event, when the tail suddenly snaps and separates and part of it blows down one and vanishes and in the end the ion tail grows back again. It's to do with fluctuations in the magnetic field uh, but that's been captured already, usually a sign of very active, dynamically active comets. So at the moment the comet is brighter than expected, it is moving north and it will become visible from Northern Hemisphere observers later in May. Now, this is the interesting part and also the part we need to be cautious. The comet should appear from Northern Hemisphere observers round about May 15th. It'll just be over the horizon then and it'll be difficult to observe. On the nights ahead it'll eventually climb further north and east and become better placed in the sky. The comet should appear approximately in the constellation of Triangulum. It'll track northeast on the days ahead. It'll enter Perseus, traveling not too far from the famous variable star Algol, known as the Demon Star. It'll continue moving northeast into Uriga, passing not too far from the proximity of the famous star Capella. Now, these constellations are visible low in the northern sky from the northern hemisphere at this time of year. So this comet will be very low, you'll need a good horizon, away from structures, away from buildings and houses and of course light pollution. Uh, so you do need to find a good horizon and the comet will require some patience. We don't know how bright it's going to be at its peak. Perihelion is mid, just after mid-May. So we'll be seeing the comet at its brightest as it begins to recede from the sun. Usually comets are at their best when they uh, pass perihelion. Uh, they tend to have more prominent tails and can be quite unpredictable. We haven't been in a position in the Northern Hemisphere to see a good comet after perihelion. It seems in recent years observers in the Southern Hemisphere have been treated to that kind of phenomena, but this is our turn. So with a bit of luck the comet will hold its brightness and continue brightening and we might see something interesting. The latest magnitude predictions from reliable sources are saying the comet may peak somewhere in the order of magnitude plus 3.5 or even Magnitude 2.5. Magnitude 2 is approximately the magnitude or brightness of Polaris, the North Star. So we expect the comet just to be a fraction fainter than that. So technically it's a naked eye object. It may have a tail. I don't know whether this tail is going to be visible to the naked eye or not. But it could be quite exciting. But it's important to, to temper expectations and not get carried away. When this comet gets more interesting every day, the media are going to pick up on it. There's going to be a lot of big headlines on massive comets that going to light up the night sky or a comet's going to blaze across the sky, put on a show for stargazers all over the world and the public, this magnificent object. It will not be anything like that. Unless it surprises us and goes into a major outburst and exceeds magnitude predictions beyond anything astronomers know. Unless that happens, which is not likely, the comet will be an object for trained observers. It could be an object for members of the public once they are educated on knowing where to look and what to use to find it. So I'm going to update the information closer to the time as the comet brightens. If it exceeds expectations, I will certainly let you know about it. However, it's very important to keep in mind that even a comet of third magnitude or even second magnitude is going to be very low in the sky. It's going to be, we're going to be viewing it through a denser part of the Earth's atmosphere, so it'll suffer from atmospheric extinction, so it'll appear dimmer than it really is. Also, comets are not points of light. A second magnitude star is easier to see than a comet of second magnitude. The reason is the comet is a fuzzy object, it's got diameter, it's large. The coma or head is an extended feature, so the light of a comet is extended out over a larger area of sky, and therefore has a lower surface brightness. So that's something to factor in too. Plus not only the low height and the fact that it's extended object, the, this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere is famous for its nocturnal twilight. As we approach late May, we really are approaching the time of year when we lose the full darkness in Northern Ireland. If anyone has never lived at our latitudes before, it can be quite a shock to the system just how bright the sky is at this time of year. At this time of year, we normally have noctilus and clouds. Uh, the basic stars along the horizon in Perseus and Auriga, those constellations, we only see the brighter members of those stars, the fainter stars just aren't visible, they're actually washed out of the sky by the intensity of the twilight. So the comet's going to be hindered by the bright twilight and it's going to be hindered, hindered by its low proximity above the horizon and the fact that it is a comet. So 
It may be challenging to see. It'll be important to use binoculars. It should be an easy object with binoculars and telescopes, absolutely, and for our cameras as well. And maybe, maybe, you never know, maybe trained observers in the right place might just catch up with the naked eye. We do not know for sure. But the interesting part is, from, at least from a personal perspective and a photogenic perspective, early season binoculars and clouds may be visible around this time of year. The NLC season usually starts in mid to late May. If there's a decent NLC display, imagine the view through binoculars or on camera of noctilus and clouds with a comet and a comet tail visible in the, in the vicinity of these clouds or embedded within them. That would be quite a cool scene. So we have a lot of hopes for Comet Swan. It's known as 2C-2020 F8 Swan. The C stands for a long period. It's a long period comet and was discovered in 2020 and was discovered by the Swan instrument on board the Soho spacecraft. So we're crossing our fingers, we're hoping this one holds together. There's speculation it may disintegrate. There's talk about the comets actually uh, perf performing very much like a new long period comet would do. Some long period comets, in fact many of them, when they approach from the Oort cloud, they tend to brighten much sooner than expected. And therefore, lead us at a false sense of security, thinking we're going to get a great show. But often when we reach that critical stage, the comet will begin to slow its rate of brightness down and underperform. This has happened many times in the past and it could happen again, so which is why we have to be cautious with our predictions. On the other hand, and this happens more rarely, but it does happen, some comets can actually overperform, beat our expectations, become brighter, Maybe because they're more volatile material on board, maybe the nucleus is large, maybe the nucleus is just very active. And uh, maybe it'll go into outburst. Comet West, 1976, a classic example of that. A comet was a bright object, rounded the sun, it broke into three parts. And because of that fragmentation, it actually flared up into a brilliant naked eye object in the pre-dawn sky. One of the most famous great comets in the last hundred years. So you, the thing with the comet is you just never know what they're going to do. Nobody knows. We can predict, we can uh, do light curves. It's just important to observe it, uh, keep in tune with social media with the updates and just see what happens. I'm very much looking forward to it. I've enjoyed looking at Comet Atlas Y4. I've enjoyed looking at Y1 Atlas and T7 Pan Stars, all interesting telescopic comets, which were also binocular objects. They're now uh, fading. So this new Comet Swan is something to look forward to and I can't wait to see it. So I'm planning my uh, observations already and I'm going to post a sky chart now showing you its path through Triangulum into Perseus and Auriga. It's, uh, the comet will be a morning object from the Northern Hemisphere and eventually when it climbs a little bit higher it will be visible all night long so technically circumpolar but very low in the sky so it will be an evening object and a morning object. But we'll have to see. So very exciting. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this of interest. I'll update more closer to the time if the comment starts to get more interesting. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing it myself. So happy observing.